Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing a top 10. Topic of this top 10, AEW Collision, which is a rumored name for the rumored Saturday show that has not debuted or hasn't even been announced yet, but they have a date set that's going to start in Chicago in just about a month and a half at the time of this recording. On my last top 10 I did, I did a, a WWE draft show and who I think should be moved in the draft. From what we're hearing, the Saturday night show is basically going to be the CM Punk show that him and FTR are going to be the focal points of that show and there's going to be a soft brand split. So I thought to myself, who would I draft to the Saturday night show, which we're going to call Collision because that's what it's assumed to be called. And these are 10 people that I think could benefit both themselves and the show to be pulled over and put into that half of the quote unquote brand split. With that being said, let's jump right in at our number 10. Kip Sabian. Now, I know a lot of people kind of look at Kip Sabian as just somebody that's just there on the roster. And I think we're very much overlooking the talent that this guy actually has. There's something about Kip Sabian that when I watch him, even when he was doing the stuff in the crowd with the bag over his head or box over his head, there's something captivating to me about him. And I think he's one of those guys that's got like an untapped potential. He could be somebody that they bring in and build to whatever they decide the mid-card title of this show to be whether they decide to have that be the International Championship or the TNT Championship, which I assume one of the two will be on this show. I think he fits that role of a classic, narcissistic, chicken shit heel type character very well. And like I said, there's something about him that just draws me in. And I know I'm not in the majority when I say this. And if you are a Kip Sabian fan, let me know down here in the comments, because I don't really hear a lot of people talk about him in a very positive way, other than they just mentioned he was on the show, but I don't hear anybody say anything bad either. Like I said, I think he's somebody that they could bring in and build up and make bigger than he is now and make a bigger deal. And with some some push behind him, I think we would have a great mid-card champion. Going from that, our number nine. Another guy that I would start off in the mid-card ranks, but eventually bring into the world title ranks, Bandito. Now, I know Bandito's done a lot of stuff with Ring of Honor, and that seems to be where they're focusing him. But for a guy that I've seen compared to Juventud Guerrero, and Rey Mysterio, and in my opinion, he's more of a psychosis in my in my mind, like a psychosis-style wrestler. I think he could be so much more than that. I think he could be a guy that you build on this show as one of your focal points. Obviously, you have some of the some of the setbacks. I don't think he speaks much English, but that's something you could get around, especially with the growing amount of Spanish-speaking people in America. I don't think that's as much of a detriment as it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I think you could get away with a, a Spanish-speaking champion, and I think the, that the American fans would go for it and be fully on board with it, especially seeing a guy of this talent. And when we talk about, and I forgot to mention in the beginning, I'm not going to add CM Punk to this list because he's already assumed to be on the show. When we talk about someone that could go up against like a CM Punk who could cover the story aspects of the show or some of the other people that we're going to mention later on in this, I think it would be absolutely great to have him on here. Plus, it gives you that spectacular guy with the crazy flips and dives that I think every show, if you're going to be a, a current wrestling show in America, I think you need that guy. So I think he'd be awesome here. Going from that, our number eight. Another guy that helps with the Spanish demographic, but I also think he could be a very credible world contender as well and you can bring him in right at the top of the card on this show and that's Roosh. To me over the last four or five years or so of Ring of Honor especially after the Elite left Roosh was the highlight of the show to me. He was the guy that kept Ring of Honor afloat in my opinion and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean that he was like the next generation of Ring of Honor star Ring of Honor has always had a way to recycle their top talents whether it be Brian Danielson and CM Punk and Samoa Joe then you got the next crop of Nigel McGuinness and Tyler Black and you got the next crop after that the Roderick Strongs and the, the Davey Richards and Kevin Steens then you had guys like Jay Lethal coming back, Dalton Castle, the Elite being what they were to Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor always seemed to have new, fresh talent. And for the last couple of years, Roosh, to me, was that guy. I think he's 
another talent that everybody could see just how talented he is, but I don't think he's been used to his full potential in Ring of Honor. I don't think he's been used to his full potential in AEW. So I think this would be a perfect fit to have him on the show, have him be one of the focal points of the show. I think he'd be absolutely awesome. Now going from that, our number seven, Powerhouse Hobbs. To me, I think you need to split up Hobbs and Wardlow and have one on each show because I think they kind of cancel each other out in a lot of ways. They're very similar in the, the big, dominating, unstoppable force way. And I think the more we can have Hobbs over here building himself away from Wardlow, maybe we build to another collision between the two. Again, much like I said with Roosh, I think Hobbs is a guy that you could pencil right in at the main event of these shows. Like I said, and I don't want to spoil what's coming up, Hobbs versus CM Punk would be a great matchup. Hobbs versus Roosh, Hobbs versus Bandito. I think we have some great matches potentially on this especially with him and I'd love to see them and this is not a knock I'd love to see them break him off from QT Marshall I think the QT TV or whatever they're calling it is beneath Hobbs and that's not a knock on QT I feel like QT's been penciled in as a low card guy and they bring Hobbs down more than they pump him up I'd love to see Hobbs on this show and I think it would really help to to get him back on track. Number, number six. Another wrestler I think needs to be put back on track. The native beast, Nyla Rose. In the early days of AEW, Nyla Rose was basically their answer to Awesome Kong. She was an unstoppable force that just plowed through the women's division. Much like Jade Cargill is now. And then, for whatever reason, as soon as she lost the championship, they seem to cool off on her. Now, I don't know what the reasoning is. I don't know why they seem to pull the plug. But we've seen time and time again, when given the opportunity to shine, whether it be on the microphone, whether it be in the ring, Nyla Rose has proven herself to be one of the top tier women's talent in the company. And I'd love to think that they would bring some of these underused women to this show and have them be building themselves. Much like I said with the mid-card titles, I think this is going to be a matter of we're going to have the Women's Championship on one show and the TBS Championship on the other. And what better way to build... Let's say you still have Jade Cargill as a TBS Champion and she's the champion of this show. Build up Nyla Rose. I know they've done the match before, but you can build her to be the woman that beats... Jade Cargill, especially if you turn Nyla Rose face, which I think she would pull off great. I think she'd be a perfect face. She could have that arc much like a Wardlow does, and the fans would get right behind her. I just think I, it's someone I'd love to see here. I hope they do more with her. Now going from that, our number five, Mark Briscoe. Mark, to me, is someone that's going to draw fans to this show that if they're flipping through the channels or they happen to turn in TBS or they happen to leave it on after a baseball game or basketball game or whatever sport they're playing and watch the first couple minutes and they see a Mark Briscoe come out, they're going to stay tuned to see what he does. And that's the kind of power I think a Mark Briscoe has on this show. Coupled with the fact that he makes awesome matchups with anybody on this roster, the people that we mentioned so far, the people that we're going to continue to mention. Uh, can you imagine a Mark Briscoe Kip Sabian feud where you build them two to be the mid card champion and that's that's your two guys going after each other? Or Mark Briscoe versus Roosh. You have the upper crust Mexican athlete versus the Delaware redneck. I mean, the, the stories write themselves. And a lot of these people he has few history with. I mean, he's been in the business for 20-some years now. I just love Mark Briscoe, and I think this would be a great way to, to have him be one of the focal points of the TV show. I'll go for Mark, our number four. A guy that he's wrestled a thousand times, Kyle O'Reilly. Now, I know Kyle's currently on the shelf, but inevitably when he comes back, there's going to be a couple things that happens. They're either going to pair him back with Adam Cole, or he's going to feud with Adam Cole. I think he would best be served to be split from Adam Cole altogether. I just say for now, you split them up. And maybe two years down the road, Kyle O'Reilly needs help, Adam Cole comes out. Or vice versa. Or Adam Cole becomes a world champion, Kyle O'Reilly attacks it after not being on the same roster for a couple of years. I know the sentimental feeling and most wrestling fans love to see them together, love to see the Undisputed Era, but I think Kyle O'Reilly's a guy that in, with the roster I'm building on Collision, I think he's a guy that much would be in the vein of 
Brian Danielson on Dynamite or even while he was Daniel Bryan. Your high-level elite Mac technician that puts on great matches with everybody on the card. I think he'd be perfect for my show. Now go from that, our number three, Hikaru Shida. You could cut and paste everything about Nyla Rose onto Sheeta. Sheeta was the longest reigning women's champion that they had. Unfortunately, it was all during the pandemic era, and I don't think she's ever caught that lightning back. She seemed to fall back behind a lot of the women that got signed after her, the Tony Storms, the Jamie Haters, the Sarayas. She seems to have fell back behind those, and with people like Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter being faced now, I think she'd be very low on the pecking order. Now that's not to say that I don't think Hikaru Shida is a fantastic wrestler. I absolutely do. Much like Nyla Rose, I think a fresh start in a new quote-unquote brand would do wonders for Shida. I think rebuilding her here to being a credible championship contender where the fans get behind her again. Ultimately, I think it, it benefits the women's division, which I think, in my opinion, has been booked rather poorly. She's one of the women I would lean on to bring that division back into prominence. And I'd love to see her get another chance to get up to being a world champion, this time with fans in the crowd. Now go from that, our number two. The guy I would make the top heel in the company or on this show on the collision half of the brand split, the Switchblade, Jay White. You can keep MJF on Dynamite as the top heel there. You bring over Switchblade, Jay White here in kind of that MJF role for this company. And just think of all the matchups. Uh, like I said, CM Punk. Jay White and CM Punk, imagine the promos they have against each other. Jay White versus Kyle O'Reilly would be a banger. Jay White and Mark Briscoe, Hobbs, Roosh, Bandito, even Kip Sabian. You could have Kip Sabian, which actually, as I'm brainstorming, I didn't even think about this till I, till I got here. Have Kip Sabian join the Bullet Club goal because I think he'd fit that perfectly. He'd be a great member to be added to that faction that they have. And yes, I know, Bullet Club isn't what it was four years ago, but I think Jay White's era, the Switchblade era Bullet Club, is highly underrated. A lot because a lot of it happened during pandemic. But to me, I think he's a fantastic leader. I think he'd be absolutely perfect to be the top heel on this side of the card. Now, if CM Punk's gonna be heel, maybe we don't need Jay White over here as much. But I still don't think that you make CM Punk a heel just yet. I don't think the fans are fully there, especially if you have the Elite on a different show than CM Punk. I think you're going to have different fan shows. And what I mean by that, there's definitely going to be a crossover. A person like myself would go to either taping, but a super fan of the Bucks and Kenny Omega might not come to the, the taping with CM Punk because they don't like him because of what happened, and vice versa. A super fan of CM Punk may not go to the show with the Elite on it. I digress, though. So I do think he will be a face of this company, at least to start off, which gives us a void for Jay White, which we can put him in as a top. Now, going from that, there's a thing I do on my top tens called the best arrest. Basically, it's people that were considered for the list but didn't quite make it. First up, Lance Archer. It is baffling to me that in the four years there's been an AEW, they haven't done more with Lance Archer than what's been done with him. This guy is an absolute monster, a fantastic wrestler in my opinion. He has a great ring style. He has a great believability to him. He's a, someone that could go out there and dominate and you believe that he would dominate just because of the size he has. I don't know why he hasn't had anything more than what they've given him, but I damn sure would like to see more out of Lance Archer. And it's not Lance. I'd like to see more given to Lance Archer. Hence why he was considered for this list. Now, last but not least, on the best of the rest, Thunder Rosa. If we're going to split CM Punk and the Elite, or CM Punk and FTR and the Elite, because of quote-unquote backstage issues, we probably need to look at some other people, too. Two of those people would be Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. More has come out a lot since the All Access show about the problems that they've had in the past, and supposedly it's all been patched up. But in my opinion, I think there's fundamental differences between the Britt Baker camp and the Thunder Rosa camp, and I like both of them. I'm a huge fan of Thunder Rosa. I'm a huge fan of Britt Baker. Again, as you can see with the other two women I've decided to put on this list, you have another former world champion here bringing the credibility to the show, making it something that they could build on. 
I would just love to see Thunder Rosa back. I think she's absolutely one of the best women's wrestlers in the world, and I think she'd be perfect for this show. Now, before I get to my number one person, if you think I left someone off the list, put someone too high, someone too low, let me know down here in the comments. With that being said, smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. If you see that little button that says join, that's how you become a channel member. I would definitely appreciate it if you considered that. With all that being said, my number one wrestler I would bring over to AEW Collision in the brand split. I'm cheating a little bit because I'm bringing a faction, the House of Black. AEW is filled with factions right now. You have the JAS, you have the House of Black, you've got the Firm, you've got the Elite, you've got the Blackpool Combat Club. There's factions all over the place. To me, House of Black has kind of felt like uh, an also ran. Even though they're currently the trio's champions, I do think that there's more that could be done with. You could use them as that. You could have them go up against the likes of CM Punk and FTR. Maybe Mark Briscoe in a tag team that he leads. Maybe Mark Briscoe in a team like Private Party. Or you could also have them do other things. You could have them go for a tag team championship, whether that be Malachi Black and Brody King, or Buddy Matthews and Brody King, or Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black, or they do a free bird rule kind of thing. You could have any of the three members go after the titles. I would think Buddy Matthews or Malachi Black would be great world champions at any point. Brody King as well, but I think you need to build a little bit more to Brody King than you would the other two. Obviously, Malachi is quasi-leader of the group, so he would be the, the person I think would be ideal for the championship. Maybe Matthews to show some dissension within the group. This is a group you could take much like they're doing with the Blackpool Combat Club right now, who are running roughshod over Dynamite. You could have the House of Black run roughshod over Collision and be your top heel faction there to go up against your major baby faces. And I think it would be a great addition to the show, especially if they're considered the focal points, or one of the focal points in my opinion. With all that being said, this is my idea of 10 wrestlers, or actually more than 10 with the faction, that they should include in the AEW Collision should they do a brand split. Let me know what you think. If you made it to the end, who do you think should come over to the show? We're going to say CM Punk and FTR are given, so anyone other than those two, two entities. Let me know down here in the comments. My name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.